sewing friends and welcome to the let's go sew with joanne banco show i'm so glad to have everybody here tonight wow we have a lot of people here and tonight i have a wonderful special guest for you uh, i got a question for you have you ever looked in your closet or sat down to sew something or started browsing those pattern catalogs and just thought like what is all this stuff? Does anything work for me? Um, most of us, you know, um, change our, our, our tastes and things over the years. And I find that it can be really hard to find flattering patterns that work for all age categories, uh, especially for mature women that, you know, want something stylish and fashionable and even fun to wear, but you know, don't want to look like necessarily everything that's out there in ready to wear. And isn't that one of the great things about sewing? So welcome, welcome, welcome tonight. Um, this is where sewing enthusiasts gather to be inspired and learn more about how to make the most of their machines. And I see so many friends here tonight. I will, I'll make sure to um, say hi in a minute here, but. I want to tell you uh, right away about my special guest. So let me bring up a picture for you to see. And let me tell you just a little bit about Diane Scarponi. Diane is the creator of Style Falcon Sewing Patterns. Uh, she's a lifelong sewer who's on a mission to create fabulous fashion for mature figures in, in particular. Uh, Diane lives in New Haven, Connecticut with her husband, David and her poodle puppy named Asta. I'll have to ask her if um, I pronounced Asta's name right. <laughs> but, you know, Diane designs sharp, dramatic, um, very inspiring sewing patterns for mature figures so that you can create your own one-of-a-kind look. So let me bring Diane on and say hello, everybody. Hi, Diane. Hi. Thanks for having me on, Joanne. It's great to be here and it's really great to meet everyone. It is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to have you here tonight, as well as all of our friends. So let me zip through here and say hi to a few people. Um, Anne is watching from uh, Providence Forge, Virginia. Hi, Anne. Always good to have you here. Diane's from Arizona, Sanders from New Mexico, Kathleen's from Minnesota. See, they're all telling me where they're from, and I didn't even I didn't even ask. They know the drill here. <laughs> right. Francie's here from West Michigan, Jill from Chesapeake, Virginia, Gail's in Wisconsin. Um, let's see, Janice. I know Janice is in North Carolina. Hi, Star Raymond. Hi, Karen. Hi, Margaret, Vicky. Oh, Becky. Cindy, Patricia, Sheila, Margaret, Rita, Connie, Chris. Wow. Linda, Noreen, Paula, Karen, Susan, Becky, Jane, Kathy, another Cindy, and um, Joe Miller, Noreen, Augustine, Margaret, Sharon. I mean, my, you all came out tonight. So that is absolutely wonderful. I hope that you'll um, you know, continue to talk to each other in the chat. We always, we have a lot of friends here that know each other and see each other on various different shows. So it's always fun to see what you, um, what you all have to say to each other as well. And make sure that you, um, post your questions tonight. Now, if you could do me a big favor, it would help if you put that cue in front of your question so that as I go along, I can pick them out a little bit easier because we're we've got such a juicy topic tonight. I have a feeling that you're gonna you're gonna have some questions for for Diane as you start to see everything that that um that comes along here. So Diane, you are a lifelong home sewer. That's amazing. Yeah. I I, I don't know if it, it's amazing, but I mean I, I learned at my the knee of my elders, like I think a lot of us did. My grandmother and my great aunt in particular were both really big sewers. And I learned from them. I, I was fortunate enough that they had they still had home ec classes when I was in junior high school. So okay. I took some like don't we all if we had that that 
the, the good fortune to have done that. We remember that fondly, don't uh, we? That, that was where I got my start. I wonder um, cool. if our, our friends that are here, how many of you got your start in junior high or where you did get your start? We always like to hear that. Even if you've told that story again, it's always, it's always fun to hear. Yeah, definitely. Well, and, I thought... Um, that really is a little bit unusual. <laughs> that, that I I think that's um I don't want to say un, unusual, but it's it's certainly you know it is amazing that you've sewn pretty much your whole life because there there are so many people these days that are you know just getting into sewing because a friend is doing it or you know they 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 thought about doing it before and never did or they they did it when they had to but they weren't really fond of it and now they've gotten into it and really are enjoying it so <laughs> that's true and and i think that sewing like anything has to come along at the right time in your life you know if you if you've got a million other things going on it can be super hard right to really get started or to sustain it but um when you when you get going and you make something and you're just super happy with it and you're enjoying it and loving it then you just want to go on to the next project and the next and the next and um that's that's the happy place to be if you can, if you can. Yeah. That's what I've been striving to do. You're, you're absolutely right. So was it your, your mom and your grandmother or aunt or who actually it was, was really my, my grandmother and my great aunt are both big sewers and they really sewed um, out of necessity really more than because they wanted to, you know, my great aunt in particular um, did a, an awful lot of, of sewing and also she did crochet and knitting. She just, she made so many things. And, and that's the, the most fond memories that I have of, of her is just these fantastic creations that she would surprise us with for our birthday or Christmas or something like that. Wow. And she's, she, she's, um, she's 94 and she's still with us. Thank, thankfully. And oh, wow. she, and it is one of her, um, one of the things that she's sad about is that she, you know, she doesn't have the dexterity and the vision anymore to really, to really. So, but she's, uh, you know, cheering me on and, and cheers on everybody who, who gets in there and gives it a try. Do you think she might be watching tonight? Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell her about it afterwards and she, she'll be able to listen anyway to that. All right. Well, let's all say hi to her. <laughs> Aunt Dot. Hi, Aunt Dot. <laughs> hi, Aunt Dot. That's great. That, I mean, that's a, that's a real, uh, a real heirloom treasure to pass on is, is the love of creating something and and you've certainly taken it to a a real level with um with what you're doing and providing other people you know with um with the ability to create beautiful beautiful garments so i can't wait to share all the different um different patterns that that uh you've got tonight and we're gonna we're gonna really dive into all those in a little bit but so just curious do you remember your actual first project yourself that you sewed it was probably clothes for a doll or a Barbie doll or some other doll or something like that. Um, you know, we, we, we did a lot of that. That was easy kind of thing to do. And you would just get these scraps of fabric and you can make like a tube dress or something like that. Um, I remember doing, um, you know, just stuffed animals and, and those kinds of little things um, when I was, you know, when I was pretty young. And then I really don't know about my first garment i'm I, I remember having some that did not turn out okay <laughs> well yeah join the club right <laughs> I, you know i mean i'm you know i'm dating myself here a little bit but um you know velour was really big you know in the 80s and i remember just demolishing <laughs> you know this velour get everywhere and that kind of stuff um and and then i you know, I went to school and, and you get away from, from sewing for a little bit. And then when I got married, I, I realized, hey, we really could use the sewing machine because my husband needed his, his pants hemmed or there were home deck things to do or whatever. So yeah. I bought a secondhand Kenmore machine and and I was off and I, you know, did quilts and then I started doing clothing and um, all the Halloween costumes for uh, the nieces and nephews and, and really and just went on, you know, from there to where I am today. Wow. Wow. Are you, have you spoiled your family members with uh, hand handmade things? And are you kind of got the reputation in the family for that? I do. I do have the reputation for that. I uh, There are a lot of baby quilts that, that people received. And uh, certainly the nieces and nephews had some pretty imaginative Halloween costumes when they were little. Um, yeah, and I've, I've made quite a few things for my mom, including, I think you'll show some pictures later. Uh, okay. She's, 
she's super stylish. And so it's always, she's fun to sew for. Um, and my husband, I so, have sewn a few things for my husband. He wanted, uh, he was a big Downton Abbey fan and he wanted a smoking jacket like Lord Grantham had. So that was, yeah, oh, silk, wow. silk velvet smoking jacket. That was probably the most complicated thing I ever made. Oh, um, you see any men's patterns in your future? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe someday, you know, maybe someday I didn't want um, my brand to be, you know, gendered or anything like that. It, it is it is potentially something I, I would do uh, in the future. But for, but for now, I'm, I'm content with what I've got. Never say never from our from our the conversation that we've had. You got a lot in the in queue for um, styles that we are all going to love and enjoy. So yeah, spoil us first. Okay. We need all those great, uh, those great female, female garment um, projects. Um, Anne's um, commenting on your uh, big sewing table and it's great oh. to see you in your, in your actual sewing space. So that's always, yeah. that's always. Yeah, this, I, I live in New Haven, Connecticut in uh, an old house. It was built in 1909. And so like old houses in the East, there's a lot of little rooms. And so I am, I'm very fortunate that I have a sewing room and this is like an old Parsons table. It's nothing fancy, um, but it gets the job done. And, um, and I also have space for my, my other baby, which is a uh, gravity fed iron. Okay. Oh, yeah. Those are, <laughs> which is not, a, it's not an exciting thing, but believe me, if you ever have one, you'll, you'll, Yep. I did without. I've used one actually for many, many years. I was fortunate to use uh, the older kind that actually was a pump up. You had oh. to pump it to get the pressure before they had the gravity fed ones um, back mm. in um, uh, fashion school. So we used to, we used to joke because no matter what you did, like if, you know, your seams didn't come out quite right or your collar didn't quite, you just mash it with that iron, and once you once you had that, you were good. You were good to go. But it, mm -hmm. we all know pressing makes a big, 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 big difference in your in your finished project for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. It would be fun to know if anybody else here um, has a gravity fed iron or even knows even knows exactly what they are. They are getting to be more and more popular, yeah, I and I love seeing all I the different projects it's on the wall there. Yep. See it. Yeah, sure up there, and then uh, you know it's just like a normal iron, but you don't you just lay it flat. You don't put it on its end like you would for a normal iron, and it is hot like you can't believe when it's cranked up all the way. And um, you buy a shoe, a little um, aluminum shoe that goes on it um, with the Teflon coating. Yeah, it has a mm -hmm. coating on it, right? And and I, if you ever do buy one, I recommend buying two shoes so that if one gets gunked up with interfacing or whatever, you can just swap it out very easily, and then you know clean it. Um, they're only like three bucks or something like that. Yeah, that's a good tip. Um, and then distilled water in the in the tank. So that's right, right. A dollar or two for a jug of distilled water once in a while. We could have a great discussion on irons. Yeah, because really, I'm I'm a big fan of using on um, specialized irons that actually use distilled water. I know a lot of people oh, they don't want to buy the distilled water. They don't want to you know worry about it. They want just going to get it from the tap, but there's so many variables in tap water and, and a lot of irons end up like choking on all that stuff you're giving it is coming in your tap water, you know, but yet the, the, a lot of the irons are manufactured to need the minerals that are in that tap water in order to create the steam. So when you have an iron like the gravity fed iron, they're designed for no minerals. And so you don't have that buildup or anything else. And those things, I mean, those things you, you probably got to, um, Put that practically in your, you know, pass it down to the next generation because it's going to. Yeah, maybe. Down. It's going strong so far. <laughs> so that's a great tool to have in your sewing room, though, obviously, right, is a is a wonderful pressing tool. Do you have any other tools that are kind of your must have things that you'd like to share with our friends tonight? Um, I think I, I put off getting one of these jobs for like a long time, you know, the uh, the magnetic pin holder. And, and, and when I finally bought one, I thought, where has this been all my life? I know this is kind of a silly little thing, um, but I, I like having that. Um, you, well, you drop your pins on the, you box, your box of pins on the floor one time and you will yeah. wish you had one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And um, I wanted to show you, I can show you a couple of other things that are kind of cool. My husband's grandfather, um, his name was Sid Ryan, was in the fashion business. He was an engineer for Gantt, if you have ever heard of Gantt shirts. Oh, yeah, sure. Kind of a preppy style, kind of like J. Crew. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he and they had a big garment factory here. And I have a couple of his tools, including these snips. You know, if you have like a, a straight thread somewhere, you snip That's it. They use and in the a and some scissors that belong to him, and I use them a lot. And oh, that is I so. Just think about this this heritage, this family heritage, really on both sides. Yeah, that's and really neat. It's just important. Yeah, it's kind of a, a cool thing. Snippers, they call those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if you have, uh, you know, like you have a, a little thread that's sticking up, you just do this and it, you you can get rid of it uh, immediately. That is a great, great, mm -hmm. great tool to have. And you can buy those with plastic handles now if you want, or yeah, I'm sure you can find the, the metal ones too, but those have been around for a really long time. That That's the other really interesting thing is some of these tools are, they're, they're tried and true. They've been the kind of things that, you know, us fabric constructors have been using for, for many years or that came down from, from the industry. That's where gravity fed irons came from, mm -hmm. from, from industrial use. And we want to have the same results that they have in ready to wear as close as, as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it looks like you've got a very like streamlined space there. Like everything, yeah. like a place for everything and, a, and everything in its yeah, place. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Do you have any tips for us as far as like being more productive yeah. and kind of having more fun in our sewing space with, with how things yeah, are going? Yeah, um, sure. I, I think that it's, I'm kind of a one project uh, at, a pers at a time person. Um, I, that's, uh, and I, I'm the sort of person that if I start something, I almost always finish it. Good there are the you. occasional dogs. I mean, don't get me wrong that, you know, I end up putting in the, in the pile to do a refashion at some point or something like that. But I, that saves me a lot of, a lot of time and energy. And I tend to not buy things um, <clears throat> unless I need them or until I need them. Um, I'm not a big fabric stash person. Um, okay. I do live here in, Pretty close to New York, so I have a really phenomenal local fashion uh, fashion fabric store called Banksville Designer Fabrics, which oh. um, in Connecticut. And even if you wherever you are in the world, they have an excellent swatching service for um, a nominal fee. They will send you swatches of if you really want something beautiful, like real Irish linen or Italian suiting or you know anything. Good to, know. Good to know. Yeah, they get their fabric from a lot of jobbers in New York City. We'll have to oh, put the resource. We'll have to put the resource for that in the show notes. So remind sure. me. Okay, um, we'll do. Um, okay. Or then I can get into the city and go to the garment district anytime too. And that's if it's not there, that it doesn't exist. You know, kind of a situation, which I'm very fortunate to have. That is so, that is a special a special yeah. gift to be able to do that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if anybody's ever going, hit me up because I am always up for shopping with anybody, and I'll show you some secret places that will knock your socks off. Oh, boy, sounds like a road trip. <laughs> That's great. So, yeah, fabric is um, fabric is the big variable, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. We, we can find in the big box store stuff that, that is okay. Most of the time it's okay. It may even be a little bit better than okay. But sometimes when you're, you're creating something um, that you know you really want to get a lot of wear out of, and it's going to be a, again, a classic. And I, I consider your pattern styles classics for sure. And, you know, then it's worth it to, to, to just bump it up a little bit, you know, do your trial muslin, your mock garment in something less expensive. So you can work out all the kinks, but then, um, you know, treat yourself to something really good. Plus, don't you find that it's just so much more fun to sew with a fabric that, that behaves like it should, you know, it's not, it's, it, it's not flimsy. It's not cheap. It's not poorly woven. It's just got that quality feel. To yeah, it. absolutely. And by by no means do I always shop there. I mean, this I bought this at Joanne. <laughs> this particular fabric, you know, for example. I mean, you can definitely find good things anywhere. Um, but part of it is really just knowing what a good fabric feels like and looks like. Um, one of the things I like to do is I I like to unspool a little bit of it from the bolt, and then see how it drapes, you know, kind of hold it up, see what it looks, how, how stretchy or not stretchy is it on the bias. Yeah. Um, and then I do, I like to scrunch it up tight in my fist and let go and see how much it wrinkles. Um, and, or, you know, and you can also get a sense of if it's going to distort, you know, give it a little, a couple little tugs to see if it has a little more give in on the weft or the weave side. Um, and, and just spend a little time 
shopping and be picky, you know, I think right. that, that goes a long way. That's and really, that's really important. I have one other little test that, that I will often do. I do it just on the very edge, but I call it the rub test where I'll take the two layers and literally rub it together because mm -hmm. especially with knits, if it's going to be something that's going to pill, um, you're pretty much going to see that happen or some knits, um, they kind of mat a little bit where they just kind of, you know, the texture sinks in. And so that's one of my little tricks that I like yeah. to do. That's a good one. I'll have to try yeah. that next time. Uh, Zena uh, says she has a hard time making up her mind on what project to make. She starts mm -hmm. starts one and then sees another one and wants to make instead. Zena, I feel your pain. That's um, We call that shiny uh, object syndrome. And it's it happens across lots of areas of life, but certainly in... in in sewing and um especially when you you know you get into like doing embellishment things like that you're just like oh i think i could do this instead or oh, i think i could do that <laughs> so i feel for you that is um that's tricky <laughs> we all struggle with that i think from time to time <laughs> and then um my friend carrie's here tonight carrie's um, a great garment sewer uh, and, and instructor and uh, she's done a lot with a lot of different fabrics. And she said, yes, in capital letters, quality fabrics make a huge difference. That is absolutely, absolutely true. Oh, and Donna says um, those snips were used in the cotton mills in Georgia. Oh. And her oh. aunt brought some home from the mill back in the 60s. Wow. Oh, that okay. is so neat. So you gave, her a, you gave her a trip back in time by showing those tonight. Oh, that's great. I'm glad. <sighs> that is so neat. And then let's see, Mary says um, she was gifted many yards of linen blends bought in the Garmin district. Wow. Some colors I will never use. Well, Marie, I'm sure there's some friends out there that you could gift that to that would like those colors. <laughs> but linen blends are wonderful because they're, they just they give you that same look of linen. But generally, they, they're they're made to be a little bit a um, little bit less wrinkle prone. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, you, you don't have to sew with linen. linen? Bed. <laughs> Five yeah. minutes after you put it on, I hear you. You like to sew with linen, Diane? I do. In fact, the pants I'm wearing right now are a linen blend um, because I, for that same reason that I like the look and the feel, and it's cool for summer, but I don't want 100% linen because I can't uh, abide the. It's the wrinkles are okay in a shirt, but for some reason in pants, it it tends to just. It's not a look I like. In a bugs pants. you, bugs you by the end of the day, maybe, it huh? Does. <laughs> I love linen for machine embroidery too. Linen is really one of the most beautiful fabrics um, for machine embroidery, even if it's a even if it's a blend. But if it's got a heavy amount of linen, um, and you can press it with a really hot iron, um, you just get like a, a special sheen and a really nice um, flat look to your embroidery when you're done. And some embroidery designs that I've done on linen, um, I don't even have to use uh, any. Um, heavy stabilizer on because the linen itself can be starched uh -huh. and then that makes it um, stiff enough. And then it, you know, you're going to iron it anyway when you wash it. I think that's why there's like a certain age category of us that don't mind linen. And then there's some other people are like, Ooh, they don't want to, they don't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole because they might not even have an iron in their house, but <laughs> we're not talking sewing people there. Right. No. <laughs> if you're a sewing person and you don't have an iron, I'm a little worried about you. <laughs> exactly. You're in trouble. <laughs> Dolly says she's moving to uh, Tennessee and she needs to find fabric stores. Okay. So if anybody is here um, from Tennessee, please um, share in the uh, comments here. She's used to being close to a lot of the stores and she's going to learn a new state. Well, I wish you well down there in Tennessee, Holly. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it there. And Carrie says she's actually been to the New York um, uh, garment district twice. Um, first time she brought so much fabric, she had to ship it home. Oh, oh yeah. Carrie, I was only there once and I, I kind of controlled myself, but, um, it wasn't easy. Let me tell you, there were so many beautiful things there for sure. Yeah. Pro, here's a pro tip in, in Times Square, which is like the next district over from the garment district is because go a little North. There are a lot of tourist shops that sell, you know, all kinds of souvenirs and stuff like that and they also sell really really cheap luggage and for maybe 20 or 30 dollars you can get like a lip like a, an extra suitcase and you will see people in the garment district lugging these cheap tourist suitcases around to just pile their pile fabric in. in yeah that makes sense pack light if you can and yeah. then um use that for your for your purchases 
Great tip. I love that. I love that. So what are you, are you, uh, your room looks too neat right now to, for my, for my um, perspective, but um, we all know that that doesn't necessarily mean there are some fa fabric flying around there. What, are you working on anything currently? Are you actually yeah. making anything currently? Um, uh, one of my patterns that, that was released this summer is called the Secret Jeans Trousers. They are um, a, a trouser that can be, sort of be dressed up or down. You can make them into a, a, a work, like a, a dress trouser or something to wear to work or to church or whatever, or you can make a mock jean out of them. Um, so I'm working on mock jeans right now, and I, I did embroider the, you know, the pockets, you know, just mm -hmm. for fun. I did that this weekend and um, I've got them together and now I just need to get the waistband on and they'll be good to go. Um, so Beautiful. this is like my, my, my current project. Um, and I've also got some sewing samples I'm doing for, believe it or not, it's for my spring 2023 line. I feel like that's how long it takes to get yeah, it. Yeah. you got to work ahead for, for sure. Spring 2023. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing that too. And, um, and then I'm going to be, doing some extra like projects for I'm going on, on vacation next month. So I'm going to try to sew up a couple things to enjoy on my trip. Oh, good, good. That sounds good. So um, I want to dive into the pattern line in, in yeah. just a minute um, here, but I do want to um, thank everybody for watching live. And if you're watching the replay, thank you as well. Um, you know, these, these shows are held once a month where I interview someone in in that's doing something in in the sewing world and bring them here to you so that you can learn more about them and introduce you to some some new things that are really going to improve your own sewing life for sure so then i would also ask you if you'd be sure to hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications um if you're on youtube because i'd love to have you um, know when new shows are coming out and um, be the first one to, to be on board here. So thank you everybody for, for being here. So what do you say we take a look at some of those um, great patterns? Sounds great. All right. I got a whole bunch of pictures lined up. So let me go ahead and bring that up and we'll get down to the next. All right. So you know, I kind of did um in order of what I think was your lineup for as you created them and and posted them so the order doesn't really mean anything you know you, you've got you got something for everybody and like i know you're adding more and more styles all the time but i think just the mix that you have right now is is really just perfect for anybody that you know wants to just start with something really really great that they know is going to be flattering they know they're going to be able to fit it to their sizing we'll talk a little bit about mm -hmm about sizing, but um, you've got something that is going to fit into whatever lifestyle that you have. I don't know anybody here ever like ever had this like dream of emptying out your closet and getting rid of everything and starting all over again. <laughs> I get that kind of bug every once in a while, although I've got certainly garments that I've made that I wouldn't want to part with. But, you know, when I see a, a pattern line like yours, it just inspires me so much that if you were if you were doing that, you could start with everything you have, make it in different fabrics, um, do use your different style variations, and you'd have something to wear every day for everywhere that you want to go. I think that's one of the reasons I just love what you've done so much. Well, thanks. Thanks. That's great to hear. I mean, I, I wear my patterns all the time myself. <laughs> so um, I, I, can, I, can, I, I can tell you it can be done. <laughs> You're, you're a good advertisement, good advertisement for yourself. I'm, I'm kind of um, checking uh, questions here as we're going along, but why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, what inspired you to create the uh, the straight A skirt? Sure. Um, and I have, uh, this is my, this is not an outfit back here, but these are just some of the samples that I've sewn. So um, if you want to see like an actual garment. Sure. Give me one sec. Yeah, I'm going to look through the um, through the questions here. Let's see. I've got one. Um, Lori definitely is asking about uh, sizing on the patterns, and she mm -hmm. saw they were for five foot three. Um, any ideas for five foot six or so? So why don't you tell us a little sure. bit about the sizing? Yeah. Um, so the sizing is is meant for um, a, a mature figure, and and just so that everybody understands what I mean by that, it's 
it's somebody who has, um, Oh, well, let me put it this way. Almost all fashion, including most sewing patterns, are, are designed off of this youthful hourglass shape, which you may be familiar with this hourglass idea. Mm -hmm. And if you have that shape, and it basically means that your, you know, kind of like your bust and your 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 hips are a, a proportional, and then your waist is a certain proportion smaller. And if you have that shape, then like everything, almost everything on earth is for you. <laughs> and if you don't have that shape, it's very frustrating to find clothes that fit you and even to sew because most sewing patterns also are following the hourglass shape. That's the traditional shape that fashion is, is done in for women. So my block is, is different. I, I built, instead of building off of that youthful hourglass shape, we built off of the shape of a, of a real person who happens to be 60. And what tends to happen when you get older is things change. You have less waist definition you have your bust point tends to be lower your shoulders may move forward a little bit you may have there's just a lot of changes that happen in your body and you don't have to be old or it's not an age thing it's just a body type um if you've had a few children you may have some changes to your belly area that most fashion is not going to accommodate for example there's a lot of there's a lot of examples of of, of why my patterns are different um and one of the other things that i do in my sizing is i don't use like traditional number sizing i just have it a through a through k and um so you can look at the, the size chart and see what what works for you um but that's and um and then and these other all these other shaping changes are, are built in so you may be used to using a commercial sewing pattern where you have to lower the bust point or you have to do a forward shoulder adjustment or you have to do a, a belly adjustment. You don't have to do those adjustments with my patterns. Like they should fit you a lot better straight out of the out of the match, uh, the shooting match. You may, I mean, not to say that it's, it's going to fit everybody perfectly. I mean, everyone's body's different. But sure. it, these kind of shapes are built into the patterns instead of something that you have to add on here and there. Um, okay. so our, my fit model is 5'4", so that's the, the general size. And that's also the size that the big four, for example, draft for, because that's the, that's the average size of a woman, an American woman. Um, five foot four? Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Um, but um, you can, I mean, I'm, I'm five, I'm five six, and the pants, you know, fit me fine, I add an inch, at, you know, at the, at the hem on the pants and the skirt. And that's really all you need to do. If you're, if you're a great deal taller, then you can lengthen or shorten them in the traditional way. Or if you are petite, you can shorten them, you know, to get them to fit you in, well, that, in that sense. And certainly length would be the easiest thing to adjust. So to, you know, I would say probably to answer that question um, a little bit more detail too, would be don't okay. worry about that because that just means that it's going to work for somebody that is shorter stature. But um, would you agree that anything, anything in your pattern line, as far as if somebody's taller, they just need to add length. And that's yeah, yeah that they just really need to add length. Um and, and just so that you understand the sizing, um, it's for a bust measurement from 34 inches to 48 inches. Um and waist is 33 inches to 47 inches. So the waist is just an inch smaller than the bust. Um most like the hourglass figure is is what it's eight inches, isn't it, Joanne? Um, yeah, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and if, like, if, who has that? Who yeah, has yeah. that? If that's your bod, you know, it's all for you. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of us, that is not our bod. Um, and then the hip is from 40 inches to 54 inches. So there's 11 sizes all together. Um, and, and just so you understand how it's built my my fit model is in the middle. So she size F and then the, the patterns are graded for five sizes larger and five sizes smaller, which is Really, all the grading you can do on to change the change the sizes before things become too distorted. Mm -hmm. um, That's good there's point. a That's I work really with you know professional industry graders and and pattern makers. Um, I'm the I'm the designer and the creative force behind this, but I work with professionals for everything because um, that's they, they bring their thing to the to the story, and I bring my thing to the story, and that's how we get it done. And that is a really good point, though, because that, you know, a, a lot of us um, that sew with commercial patterns, you know, there 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 are different size ranges, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. And if they're doing it the right way, they're doing it off of a different block when they're doing a different size range. But if it is a pattern 
that's going to be from, you know, size two all the way to 22, the likelihood is somebody in that in that range isn't going to be happy with it because the neck and the shoulders are probably not going to be right yeah. and the arms are going to be funny. And, you know, yeah. we've all experienced that in even in, in ready to wear, you know, you pick yeah. a size that normally should fit you and it looks, you know, it might be perfectly fine everywhere, but then the sleeves are weird or something, you know, or the shoulders fall in a funny spot just because it just wasn't made for a real body. It was just made for style and not for, for function. So, right. So I, I, I realized my, this is my dress form, Ruby. That's her name. Cause she's bright red and she's been flashing everybody for a little while, but <laughs> it is bright red. I don't think I've ever seen a bright red one. Oh no. Yeah. This was like a, I don't know. It was like a, a limited edition or something. At some nice. Point. But yeah. This is the skirt you were showing the image of. And what I wanted to show that's really clever about it is there's pockets in the front here on the side and there's uh -huh. a button, button closure. And in most, most of these, it's a, this is made out of like a ponty knit, um, but you could, you can make it out of a scuba or something like that if you wanted to also. And um, one of the things that's interesting about it is they, you can't normally, you can't usually very well do a, a good pocket in a knit because it doesn't, you know, it just stretches and it gets weird on you, you know, but yeah. if you have it in the front like this, like it is in this skirt or you can see it in the illustration there. Yeah. That's what I'm going to bring up next. Cause that's, yeah. I love the fact that you have all the, um, we call this line art, you know, and, mm -hmm. and line art to me is what really tells the story of a pattern. When you look at, at any pattern and you're seeing the, the model with the pretty picture or the illustration, uh, you get a general idea, but when you look at the lines, that's where you really see, you know, the, the, the real style of, of the garment for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about the, the different pockets on here. Sure. Um, so the inseam pockets in the front, you can put your phone in there. Everything is designed so you can put your phone in it. That's like my standard of what is a useful pocket. <laughs> um, and because it's it, the way it is sort of in the front, it doesn't, it's not going to distort the skirt and you're wearing it. There are side seam pockets also if you, um, you know, if you want that option. Those are, those are a little, those are super easy to sew. The inseam pocket is a little, is a little bit more work, but I think it returns a really cool result. And then there's a hidden elastic in the in the waistband so that you can have the comfort of a, a elastic without that like elastic waist look. Um, and, and so it, it's, it'll it'll stay smooth and, and you could if you wanted to put some power mesh in the waistband if you, you know, wanted a little tummy control. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great. Mm -hmm. idea. Could, could you do both pockets at the same time? If you wanted to, yeah, or... yeah, you could. I mean, you could have four pockets in it if you wanted to. Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you if you have a, like a car, then it would be a cargo skirt, I guess. But yeah, why not? Um, uh, Janice says she loves the side inserts in your blouse. Oh hey, yeah, Janice, we're gonna get to that. We're, we're gonna, gonna get, get to that. that. I'm gonna make you wait. Yeah. So. <laughs> hold on. All right. So how do, would everybody like to see this on a real person? There mm -hmm. we go. <laughs> there I am. Yeah, um, so flattering. And you can do two lengths, also like an above the knee or below the knee, for depending on what you like. And there you go again. You know, all it is is a matter of adjusting that length to whatever whatever you like. So, uh -huh. yeah, that looks great. I just I just think it's a really um, it's a beautiful style, and it's something you can use for you know tucking in because uh -huh. you do have that band which can be right. used as kind of a tummy control, like you said, or, you know, it can be, you can be uh, wearing that with an over blouse or sweater or sweater set. I mean, it just, it's beautiful. So what fabric is it that you're actually wearing in this picture? Yeah, that's a, it's a ponty knit. Um, you could also do a scuba or, um, you know, any kind of a stable knit or a stretch woven if it's stretchy enough, it would need to be you know, have a certain percentage of stretch for it to work. Okay. Um, and it does, the, the other thing about the shape of it is it does give you the, if you don't have a waist, if you are in that type of, you know, body, body type that you don't have much of a waist definition, it gives you the illusion of having a waist, um, which some people like. Yeah, definitely. It, I think it'd be perfect uh, for ponty knit because, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, and, and easy care too. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't. Oh, yeah. you, you, you wash you, machine. Yeah, you have your iron fine, but I don't think you're going to need it for that garment once you're done making it. You really yep. don't. You're done. You're good to go. Mm. Love it. I love it. Um, is it, um, 
like does it vary at the bottom as far as the width as the sizing goes up um yeah a little bit i mean it's it, it is graded out at the side seam um so it it, it is a little bit um you know our, my, my grading rolls are um like a, a quarter of an inch and then for the you know the first six sizes and then um three-eighths of an inch and then half an inch for the largest two sizes um so there is a little more volume for the largest sizes but it's not it doesn't become like a giant thing you know but it, yeah. it does it, it just to keep the proportions exactly so i was gonna say that keeps it proportional um yeah. let's see i got a couple questions here i think i think it's the same question from the same person if i look yeah joe Joe wants to know, is it possible to make it a skort? Or actually, she said, huh. um, is there a way to add um, shorts under it? I think that would be a that would oh, be yeah. a cool hack, wouldn't it? Yeah, like if you were doing some like a, a bike outfit or something where you want to wear you have yeah, why I mean I I don't or just for comfort even. I bought a yeah. jean shirt recently that um, it's a little bit on the slim side, you know, and so it kind of <laughs> holds you in a little bit, but um, it's got shorts. It's got just nylon trico shorts underneath it. And it mm -hmm. makes it super comfortable to wear. That would be a fun, fun uh, future hack that you. Yeah, could do. that's an interesting idea. Thanks for the idea, Joe. Yeah, very good. That is a great idea. Uh, and Anne wants to know. This is a little, little off the um, pattern topic, but a great question, Anne. What machines do you use? Uh, what machines do I use? Um, for that, I primarily made that on my baby lock evolution serger. You can make that almost on the entire skirt on the serger, except for some top stitching, um, around the, the pockets basically. And I also have, I have a Bernina a 580 and then I have a Fop performance five. Okay. And I still have my old Kenmore that I bought when I just first got married. Just for oh, the wow. So You're it's old. a little sad, but, <laughs> but I, I, I'm, uh, I'm emotionally attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> and got to give it a run every once in a while so it knows that yeah, you still I did, love it. I did get it repositioned a couple of years ago just so that I, I knew it would be ready to go if I had to. <laughs> and then Becky's making a comment that it looks like, um, I'm assuming she's referring to the waistband there, that that won't roll. No, no, it doesn't. It, it stays yeah. flat. And and it has just like a, a tiny bit of elastic. It's just a quarter inch elastic, which you would think is not enough. But there's a secret uh, elastic channel just on the, on the, um, the waistband facing. So you don't see it on the outside. Okay. Um, so just to look at it from the outside, you would think that there was a zipper or something. Yeah. Um, but in fact, it, it has that, you know, and you really don't need a ton of elastic in a knit, you know, I mean, in a stretch, a knit like that, you just need a little bit just for insurance sake. It's so, it's so sleek looking and so, so smooth. I love it. I right. love it. I, you know, it's skirts can be so comfortable to wear too, because I they're, think so. you know. I think a skirt, it's sort of my secret weapon in the summer, especially. I, I don't. I don't think I look great in shorts. I don't wear shorts that often. I wear. Uh, I wear skirts a lot in the summer, and they're cool and comfortable. And you. You just look a little more dressed up. Right. Exactly. And just like you have on your website, you've got the. You know, you got the shorter version, and you say, you know, if you're if you're the warm type, you know, wear a little shorter. If you're right. cold or or in colder climates like we are, and you want to wear it with your boots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have them with my boots on in that picture. That was more of a winter a winter look myself. Yeah, I love it. Well, let's see what the next. Let's see what the next one is. Okay. Oh, this one. Yeah, I remember. I remember this. Or just go to top, which is what Ruby is wearing. <laughs> Um, let me try to, ah, there we go. That um, is a great one. Yeah. I'm going to let you talk about that for, um, for a minute. Sure. Um, so the, what's really cool about this top is it has these big sort of diamond shaped godets on the side and you can see in the illustration there also. And it, it gives you, there's a lot of like drape and drama with this. And it's, if you have a, a nice Jersey that, that's, that flows a little, that's a little slinky, it works great. Um, you can either do a sleeveless version, which is, has a, a you know a typical uh, armband kind of thing, and a neckband, or this cowl, which I think is super pretty. It really frames your face beautifully, and it's and it makes a statement. Like my uh, my my patterns are going places, you know, and they're getting attention, and that's one of the things that this top really does. It also has a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit of ruching on the side for your bust. So that if you're in it, you know, often if you're in a t-shirt, it's, um, you don't want to dart in a t-shirt, right? But just that little bit of ruching right here um, helps with the shaping. And then in the back, it, it has, all of my patterns have a center back seam. 
because as we age, often our shoulders and our back tend to um, move forward a little bit or, or can get a little distorted. And you want to always be able to create shaping back there. So this, it, it, it lays beautifully against your back. I know most people, maybe you don't think about your back that much when you're, you're getting dressed, you think about your front, but just know that you look great walking away also is, is, is a cool um, element of this. And then, and then you are so right about that. So the, the cowl, could that be um, changed as far as the, the depth? You can make a smaller cowl if you wanted to. It is a pretty big cowl because um, I, I feel like go big or go home when you get into cowl shape. So it's it's like this. Yeah. Um, but then when it, it folds back, you have to you know you dress it a little bit. And it it's almost like a little scarf, like a built-in scarf. And, and so it's kind of a fun... Um, Look, if you were to do a color blocking, like some of some of the people who've who've summed this up have, have done the, the cowl in different fabrics so that it's almost like a built-in scarf. Um, uh -huh. which is cool. That's a great idea. I like that idea. I'm I'm hunting for another um another picture here that I want to show. So I'm gonna oh, yeah. I'm gonna mm -hmm. flip to the um just to this one here and you could talk just a little bit about the the godets and and then the other the banded neckline. So yeah. Yeah, so the godets are on the side, and it's this giant triangle, a uh, giant uh, sort of diamond shape. And you can also do that in a color block. When I, I made one for my mom, I, I did it in a, a, a lightweight black sweater knit, the, the body of it. And then I did the godets and the neckband in um, a stripe, a black and white stripe. And it's just a really striking look. That's the picture I'm looking for. So I'll oh, bring okay. that up in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, I love I love the fact that you know you can make it for winter or summer. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, and it, it's the kind of thing that looks it looks good with um, you know, like a, a skinny jean or like and yeah, there's my mom. There it is. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Let me bring that up a, a little bigger so everybody can see mm -hmm. that. So that's my mom on the right. In case you didn't notice, I mean, we look a lot alike. Um, she really knows how to accessorize, so she was she was dressed up for that. Oh, nature. she's got it. She's got uh, that style on the, down. On the left is one of the testers. Um, her name's Elaine Batiste. Uh, she's in, in the UK. And uh, Elaine Makes is her name on Instagram, if, you, if you're on Instagram at all. And um, and she she sewed that up, and then she went on vacation to Portugal and wore it on her vacation. So <laughs> I had to share that picture. Wow, that's a beautiful top. I just That one has, like, like all your patterns, but it has so many possibilities. Um, Carrie says it's a beautiful silhouette. Carrie wears a lot of, um, Carrie, that top would be like, it's calling your name, I think, because that's a style that you um, definitely carry out very, very well. Star Raymond loves it. Zena loves it. Oh, thanks. Um, uh, Janice says she bets it's super comfy. I yeah. bet. I it bet. It is. It is. Yeah. And it's comfy, but it's, it's not just an ordinary t-shirt. Like you are, it is, I mean, it is a t-shirt. It's made out of a jersey or some kind of a knit like that, but it's, it, it, it looks like something special. You know, it looks like something you, you went to a boutique and spent a lot of money on. Yeah. It's elegant with really a very timeless style too. Definitely. You know, something that it's, it's, uh, there ought to be a word that that's a crossover between like trendy and fashionable, but definitely mm -hmm. not faddish because those types of tunic style garments, they're, well, they're, they're an ancient style for one <laughs> thing, just tweaked one way or the other. And they look good on everybody, no matter what your, you know, no matter what your size range is. And they, they're something that you can make and wear for many, many years and, and enjoy it. Noreen's got a great question. Can you use different sleeve types with it? Yeah. Um, so it's in, in the picture here, I, I made my mom this sort of elbow length short sleeve because she doesn't like a really long sleeve. Um, Elaine made the full long sleeve. And then there's also a sleeveless version. Um, it just has a, 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 a band, a, a sleeve band, which is very easy to sew. You know, you just sew a, a strip in, in the round and, and then you, 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 um, you sew it on and then you top stitch it. Um, you top stitch the seam allowance down. It goes together pretty quickly, just like a neck band would on a, a regular t-shirt. Nope, I can't hear you. Sorry about that. I said I I could see maybe doing a ruched sleeve on that as well. You know, do oh, some yeah, like right, just along here. Other. Yeah, I think it has a lot of other possibilities. I I also was thinking of doing a little cuff, 
you know, it would be kind of cool if you were doing a color blocking situation just to uh, ribbing a rib rib knit like banded, um, yeah. you know, style like that would be would be really good too. Yeah, lots of lots of potential. So it looks to me like you um, instead of a dart, you made just gentle gathers on the side. That's right. that yeah, there's just a, there's just a few there's just gentle gathers here, and you can see them a little bit in the illustration. And it just gives your 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 bust a little shaping instead of a regular t-shirt, which is just flat. You know, it's it it, it gives you a little a little oomph. But it's, it's subtle. It's not like you really notice. You know it's there, but it's not super noticeable. I, I like that idea a lot, Diane, because I've got some knit patterns that have a dart in it. And and on one hand, I like it because, you know, I don't need it as much as everybody else, but a lot of people need that real, you know, yeah. dart shaping. And yet it just seems like it's not a good fit for a t-shirt. It just seems like it's out of place somewhat because we're not used to visually seeing that. So I like what you've done there yeah. by you know converting it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, really the idea for this all credit really goes to Christine Groom, who's the pattern maker that I work with. Um, she figured out how to, you know, she's like, here's, here's how I recommend that you approach this. And it's, it's really easy to sew to you to stretch it, you know, and sew it. It's not, I mean, sewing a dart, you know, in a knit is kind of the devil's work, you know, by comparison. <laughs> so yeah. it's also easy, um, which is always a bonus, right? Okay, we got a couple of questions here. I make sure I get in. So Janice wants to know: Is the neckline on uh, the one that your mom has on the same as the um, Godet? The Godet so yeah, you... yeah, it's the same fabric. Yeah. Um, so the the body the the body of it is just a, a very light sweater knit, and then there's this sort of striped jersey that I did the neckline and the Godets with. Um, because of the way this is shaped, the if you the body doesn't work very well in a, in a, in a, a stripe, the stripe tends to get a little distorted. Um, but you can use it to play with, uh, like I did. And my mom put it on and she says, it looks like I have a waist. You know, she was so excited. <laughs> it, it, it's a, that illusion, you know, that it's all about, about creating that, that illusion. Yeah. And she um, wears them with some black skinny pants, you know. Yeah. Uh, very look. slimming look. Very slimming. She looks really happy wearing it for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I got a question here. Let me find it. All right. Um, Cindy wants to know, she says, Diane's Mom's top has a different neckline. I, I think I think um, it's the the neckline that we're yeah. seeing there. My mom's the top is a version is a mix of both of these. The, there's a the one that has a the sleeveless banded neckline, or then there's the cowl neck. So my mom wasn't she doesn't like a, any kind of a cowl or anything. So I just I I mix the, these two. It's the same pattern, but you can mix and match them. Um, so in her in that case, I just did that neckline. Uh, the banded neckline, and then I did the short sleeve. Um, you just, you know, cut the sleeve off gotcha. and, right, and you get a short sleeve. And then the band is just a little bit wider, looks like me. Um, right? Yeah, it's it, it's it's the same band. Um, it might just be okay. an illusion because of the fabric or the way she's wearing it or something. Okay. Um, but it's the same thing. And then Elaine, uh, also in the picture here, is has the cowl. That's good. That makes it easy because then mm -hmm. you can use the pattern just like just like it is. And uh, Kathleen likes the bust ruching. She says a t-shirt dart can help with fit, but it's challenging to have dart end up in the correct place. You I got know. that right, Kathleen. Yeah. You have yeah, got that right. The way to go. Definitely. Go say hi to Barb Jones. Hey, Barb. Glad <laughs> glad you um, got in here and joined us live tonight. So that's great. Yeah. There's um, there's just I'll just that that one is just knocks my socks off because I just see so much potential. And like I said, I think it's probably, um, you know, the kind of top that you're going to make and you're going to, you know, buy, make it in good fabric because you're going to want to wear that for a long time to come. You're going to have so many things you can wear with that. Definitely. All right. Let me see what my next one is that I had up here. Um, let's see. Aha. Another one of my favorites. I'll put I'll put it back on Ruby. This is this is um a sample that I did for my fit model. So it skews the kind of funky fabric here. It's <laughs> pretty. It's very pretty, and I know you've so got I embroidered. Looking, I was looking for something that was going to be kind of like a, a you know a special occasion kind of look. Um, you know I don't know if this is really doing it, but it was it was worth a try. But the thing that I did um that I think is is cool to show is the um. The way that the collar is made, I'll move Ruby a little closer here so you can see the collar a little better. There's um, 
There we go. Oop, oops. <laughs> I have this camera thing that's like an eyeball, and it, it's literally like an eyeball rolling around in a socket sometimes. Yeah, it's um, good. You get it's a little perfect if you love machine embroidery. And I, I specifically designed this um, for people who love to quilt or love machine embroidery. This is just a little field where you can put your thing, with machine embroidery or hand embroidery, or if you like to quilt, um, you can you can quilt the collar and the collar's designed so it's it's cut on the bias so that it wraps beautifully around your shoulders. Um, is you know collars can often be a little unwieldy otherwise, right? Um, and then it has just the single button closure here in the front, um, which because it's, it's meant to be uh, worn as a jacket, it's sort of a third piece, a layering piece, or you can wear it as light outerwear, um, you know, however, however you like. And it's got, you know, it's got the long sleeves, of course, and they're kind of a bell, a bell shaped sleeve. Um, it's a beautiful that's sleeve. That's kind of a bell shaped sleeve and it's a bracelet length. So if you have, you know, like you have your nice bangle or whatever, you want to show it up if you go out, right? Um, and of course it, it has pockets cause you gotta have, you have to have pockets. That's the law. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, like that. I, I mean, I just think everybody needs pockets, you know? I mean, I, you, you'll notice that, that, that women are wearing them on their, are wearing ball gowns with pockets on the red carpet, you know, like you gotta have pockets. Um, so it's got a, it's got a pocket and there's a really clever construction technique so that the pocket is, is almost invisible. Um, you, it doesn't, it's not going to bag out or, or ruin yeah, you it if just you worry about that kind of thing. Floats right into the side seam. Yeah. It tucks right into the side seam. And this does have a bus start um, for shaping and it, and it fits a kind of low hip and you can either, this one happens to be fully lined or there's also an unlined version yep. on, me, on whether you want to go, you know, the full, the full lining or not. Let me bring up that next um, image. Well, first let's just, I just want to hit the highlights of, you know, like, this, these were my impressions when uh -huh. I looked at the patterns. And so what I listed here um, in the bullet points was just what jumped out at me. So the classic style, for sure. Uh -huh. This jacket, again, make it out of fabric that you love. You know, do a test, but then make it out of fabric that you love because you're going to wear this for for years. It's never going to go out of style. It's going to look good with so many things. I, I could see, you know, dressing it up or dressing it down. I think it would look fabulous in denim, just like yeah. plain old ordinary denim, maybe do a bunch of top stitching on the, on the collar if you wanted to, yeah. or add em embroidery on denim is probably one of the most beautiful things you can do in my, in my book. But yeah. um, that collar, you know, that statement collar just gives you all kinds of possibilities. If you do, um, I think of, you know, some of my friends that do crochet and they make those beautiful like crocheted flowers yeah. um that would be a really neat thing you know you don't have to do both collars you could just put it on one and have it be almost like a like a like a corsage you know mm -hmm. you could just oh, so many different things trims different trims yeah mm -hmm. and those bracelet sleeves not only are they a great length but they're also with that little extra flare you've you've got like your eye gets drawn to things like that you yeah. know that style line it's like not just straight and ordinary. You, your eye just goes, oh, that's interesting. There's a little flair to that. Yeah. And be another great place for trim or a border design of machine embroidery. Your pockets are great. great. Case, Joanne. I think one of the things I really like about the collar is that it um, it it creates, I call it the positive space jacket because I think it, it's a positive, you know, it's a positive thing to have in your life. But it creates this negative space around your face. And, and when, when, um, Meg, the, who's the, my fit model, when she tried it on, it, it like really just lit up her face. Just the, just the proportion of this, it's like a, tr it's like three triangles, right? And like the geometry of it, yeah. um, it just really, it works with the, your proportions really well and, and it makes your face pop in, in a way that's, that was really beautiful. Um, so that's kind of what excited me about it. <clears throat> I think you have some really cool examples that, some of the other, some of the makers have some. Yeah, definitely. Dev, I'm just, I'm getting, I, I got to admit, I'm getting carried away by reading all the comments. Everybody's just loving all these. All oh, these thanks. Things. You guys are so sweet. Barb says, this is awesome. It's going to jump to the head of the project line. And um, Carrie says, love it. Embroidery, bell sleeves, pockets. Yay. It's a winner, Carrie, right? Yeah. It's a winner. And liner on lines, you know, again, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that jumped out at me because if you want to make it cooler and, you know, you want to make it in a linen blend or something 
you know, maybe the denim that you want to wear, um, you know, kind of as a three season garment, but mm -hmm. In, in a heavier fabric or, you know, fully lined, you you could probably get away with that in a scarf and leave your coat at home, depending on where you live and different different temperatures. Yeah, yeah, it's a good fall and spring um, jacket or as like a layering piece, if, you know, for the office or wherever your life takes you. And then I have to say, raglan sleeves are absolutely, they, they've, for, since I my early days of sewing, I have always loved raglan sleeves. They they're they're so comfortable to wear because you don't have that armhole mm -hmm. circle that ends up in the wrong spot for depending on where your arm <laughs> is yeah. and how it is in you know the socket. But um, it's also really easy to sew. Really yeah. easy to sew. There, no puckers. No easing, no, you know, nothing that's going to um, throw you off on, on your sewing game when, when you're doing that, for sure. Yeah. Um, Joe's already, Joe, I think she had a comment before that okay. this was dangerous for her because she wanted everything. So <laughs> he's already ordering. Hopefully, Joe, you're still here. <laughs> you're still here with okay. us. I wanted to tell everybody, if you sign up for my email list, if you go to southalkin.net and you'll get a, a, a co coupon code. OK, so like, please do that. So, you know, you can yes. enjoy the coupon code as part of this. I want to, um, you know, thank everybody for listening. Please, you know, take advantage of that. To get yeah, to definitely. Sign, sign up to be part of Diane's um, flock. The flock flock of followers. <laughs> so I've got, the, I've got the website right at the bottom going across okay. there. So make sure that you make note of that. Very easy to remember. Stylefalcon.net. Just right. make sure you do .net. Not, yeah, not it's dot a .net. net. Yeah. Yeah. And let's, um, yeah, she's, she's, uh, she's all right. Ho hopefully, Joe, you caught that so that you can um, get in on the, on the coupon. And then um, Augustine, she says that uh, phone pockets are an absolute must. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely. You, yeah, absolutely. No, no, no question in my mind. You got to even live without those pockets. Yeah. So let's take a look at the at the lines on it again. You know, there you see the dart. You know, so that's good. That's a good thing. That's going to work really well in the type of fabrics that you're going to be um, making that jacket. And you could see how the how the lining goes in or how it's um, faced if you're just doing it um, mm -hmm. with the facing and leaving that inside just uh, with finished seams. So very good. Very good. Yeah. Um, Kay wants to know about the shirt. Yep. Kay, hang on. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> I'm, not saying... <laughs> I'm not saying we're saving the best for last. I'm just saying that we're saving the sneak peek for last. So keep, keep that in, keep that in mind. And Joe got the code. So All right. Good. I'm glad Joe. Yeah. She says, thank you. So. Sure. Very good. Very good. All right. So let's see. What do we, oh, we got some, some pictures of real people wearing yeah. it. So unfortunately, they're not really big, but I, you know, they were, I, with the four of them together, that was the only way I could put them on, but. Oh, okay. But, yeah. If you, but, if you go on to stylefalcon.net, you'll see these larger pictures, but um, just briefly, this, the woman, I'll, I'll, there's four women here and one of them is French and I want you to guess who's the French woman. <laughs> <laughs> who has the most style going on? You, you know, I mean, they, they all do, but the woman in the, in the upper left is she, she lives in France and yeah. she made embroidered, she embroidered, um, hand quilted the collar in this beautiful, like variegated, um, gray and black thread. And it's beautiful. And she fully lined it and she, she, you know, and she's got the scarf and she's got it going on. Um, the woman on the, on the top, right, um, she lives in the Atlanta area. And so she did a spring version. So it's interesting. This is spring. There's a spring fall look, you know, and it's the same exact jacket, but a completely different look, depending on the fabric and how you yeah. style it. Like she's out there in her jeans and her t-shirt and she's, you know, going shopping for the day or whatever. Um, and then the two women on the bottom, they're both British and you can see, um, the woman on the left has uh in the white has um she did an online version and and in a uh it was like a kind of a coating uh like a nubby uh, uh, textured coating uh -huh. and then the woman on the right it it's too bad that her back is showing but you got to show the back somewhere um she did a fringe on the collar so she she left the edges raw and just pulled the fringe out which is a really cool idea also ah okay very, very nice. They're all, they're all so different looking. So I love the fact that, you know, you, you have all these images that are 
inspiring us, but we can also see that, you know, it's fitting all these different bodies, uh -huh. right? So yeah. now we get a, a really good picture of the, the size range and how that's working. And, and then all the different fabrics that just give it a whole different look and style. So really amazing, really amazing. And Zena likes the sunglasses. Now that- I know. That, um, <laughs> she's so awesome. I, I sent you an email and I'm like, you cannot take a bad picture. Like she sent me a hundred pictures and she just, <laughs> she's just, uh, you know, gorgeous. And, and she just had, she's, yeah. you know, she looks like a professional model. I, I, I love how she styles she, it too. She knows how to stand even, you know, yeah. I mean, there's a certain art to that, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a flair for sure. So uh -huh. we got getting some great, great comments. I think you, you've got a lot of new friends here tonight, Diane. Oh, no. <laughs> and okay. I'm just, again, I'm so happy to, to have you here as, as my guest and be able to really introduce you to so many people that I know, and I'm sure you've got some friends here too, but, um, and, and really, you know, just, let everybody see what's out there. And everybody that knows me knows I only like to, you know, sponsor things that I would do exactly myself. And when we first met, we met through a, um, a mutual organization that we belong to. And I said, oh, I got to reach out to Diane, like El Pronto and, and make yeah. sure that I get you on the show because I just knew that everybody was really going to enjoy um, everything, everything. Oh, so now Vicki mentioned something that we haven't talked about yet. So let's mm -hmm. definitely um, cover this. So oh, sure. uh, we just checked out the website. She's pleased to see that the patterns are um, downloadable PDF and mm -hmm. layered. So, mm -hmm. yep. So, um, so what that means is there's two ways to get the patterns. Um, when you, when you buy a pattern, it comes with uh, a printed home version, which is you basically print it out on, you know, ordinary printer paper like you have. Um, the first page will have this test square, and that should measure exactly two, two inches or five centimeters square. Um, so you can be certain that it's printing at the right size. And if it's not printing at the right size, then check your printer settings. It's probably your printer setting is in, at 100% or actual size. And um, Or you can also do a copy shop. You can send it to, you can either email it or, or put it on a thumb drive or bring it to like Kinko's or your local copy shop or whatever who can who'll print it for you. Um, there, that is, a, it's a, it's a little bit of, of extra work, but it's not, um, that's the way it is. It's the, the days of being able to print, ex, you know, at a reasonable cost are, are over. Um, and um, also, as you, you probably notice, this is like kind of a global business and trying to ship something to say France or Australia or something, is just impossible, really. It, it, at this stage, you know, I, I only, this, um, Stealth, Stealth Falcon's only been out there since uh, March, you know, we, or did, I just got started. So it's something I'd like to do in the future. Um, and when she talked about layering, layers, you can see, I mean, if, if you know what a sewing pattern looks like, you yeah. can see like here's all the different sizes and you can choose just the size that you want to print. So you don't have to have the spaghetti of all these different sizes if you don't want it. Um, so you can choose one size, you can choose. Oh, and I didn't realize that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. that's okay. a layer of print. And, and you can also choose, like, if if you want to grade between sizes, maybe, you know, if your waist is, is a slightly different size than your, right. so the bust, you can you can choose more than one size and, and then blend. Um, but it makes it a lot easier to cut and follow the lines that way. Um, and that also, the, the print, the, the coffee shop version also is printed on gridded. It, there's a one inch grid on it, which makes it really easy to just eyeball the size. And you can also use it with a projector if you want. Um, yes, I don't, you actually have three versions. I know. Yeah, I saw, yeah, yeah, there is. I mean, yeah. I don't, the projector, yeah, you it's, not consider... a, it's not a proper projector thing, but it, you can do it. Um, yeah. And then the other thing you should know is that all of my patterns are designed to be accessible, meaning that you can read them because a lot of patterns are super hard to read. Um, and especially if you're you don't have the best vision as you get older so everything nice bold big black font and there's also instructions large print instructions in addition to your regular print instructions where there's just one instruction and one image on one page so it makes it very easy to follow um, along on a you could on a ipad or um you know if you wanted to print it out it's a lot of pages but if you really need to see all the detail. I, I yeah. spent a lot of money with a graphic designer to make all the illustrations beautiful. I mean, her name's Adriana Guerre and she does oh, beautiful, beautiful Thumbs work. up to Adriana. And yeah. so you're gonna look at it. It's worth seeing. And um, it, 
I, I do get a lot of compliments on on her work, and I, I do want to you know give some props to her. Well, I've got my I've got my okay. um, positive space jacket all all printed, ready to ready to um, paste together, and mm -hmm. and I encourage anybody if you've never done a, a printable PDF pattern before, um, they really are easy. It, if you're if you've ever you know tried to fit square pieces into square holes, you're basically doing the same thing or jigsaw puzzle. You know, it's easier than a jigsaw puzzle. You're just putting the pieces together and everything is numbered. So you, you can't go wrong. You just follow the map. Yeah. That's, that's all there is to it. And pages are, you know, printed out in order and the instructions are all, all there to match. So, but I like you, you know, the thought of, of you could take it to a copy shop. Um, I've done those before and for me, that means going to my local um, office supply yeah. place. But just always double check the pricing first because uh -huh. you want to know what, you know, different places are different. But they'll, they can print it then on large format paper, like basically mm -hmm. kind of like blueprint paper. Yeah. And then you could just cut it out just like you would a standard pattern. But mm -hmm. you're not dealing with all that cheapy tissue. You've got real, real paper, right. which... Another benefit, you know, your patterns are classic, timeless. I think they're going to be the kind of patterns you're going to want to use over and over again and just, you know, change up the, you know, how you make it. And, um, and so you want something good and sturdy and, and durable. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that is a good, a good point about it. I, I found that, uh, you know, some people would say to me, you know, I used to do, use the tissue patterns, but I can't read them anymore. It's blue ink on, on this brown tissue and it's hard to read or, um, or it just disintegrates in your hand. Yeah, don't whatever. sneeze on them or they're going to halfway fall apart. They're just Yeah, like, and, and they're not even really printing, you know, I mean, the whole printing situation with those patterns is not a, um, is not long for this world, in my opinion, given what's happening with the the pattern industry. There's there's literally in the United States, to my knowledge, is one printing plant that yeah. has tissue patterns and yeah. um, yeah. it's pretty impossible to get them to print them for you if you don't already have an established relationship with them. <laughs> so there's also that. So let's take a look at the at the next one, mm -hmm. which is your newest one, right? Yeah. Newest one. Yeah. This was released in, yeah. in July. This this is the secret jeans trousers, which I showed you. These are the ones that I'm working on right now. Um, I showed you the embroidery on the pocket, right? Because you got to have pockets, right? Um, but there's also pockets in the front. This is a jean style pocket, um, you know, which everyone's familiar with. But what's nice about this style of a pocket is it will never bag open on the sides on you, and your stuff will never fall out. <laughs> because, Perfect. You know, a typical trouser pocket that with the side, the side seam pocket is always a crapshoot whether your stuff's going to fall out or they're not deep enough or whatever. So that's the way this is done. Um, it's, a, I don't have the waistband on them yet, but I'm wearing a pair um, because I, I do, I do wear all of my. All right, let me bring you up a little bigger there yeah. so we can so see. So it's you. a flat front, and then in the back it's elastic, so it's comfortable to wear. Um, if you have a belly, the, the pants, um, the shaping of the pants has a little bit of a belly uh, shape to accommodate that. If you don't have much of a belly, you can just add a, a dart in the front. Okay. Take up that ex excess. Um, do you want to stand up again and back up a little bit? Because I didn't okay. have the full screen. Sure. <laughs> You're going to want to do that for the next one anyway. Yeah, so you can see it's, it's a flat front. So it doesn't, it looks nice. And then in the back, it's elastic in the back. Okay. Um, you can do a patch pocket or I, these are like trouser style that I wear to work. So I didn't do that. And then here's the pocket. Um, and then it's, it's kind of a slim cut leg and um, it's, it's, I wouldn't say that you, it's not like a skinny, it's not a skinny leg. Uh, I can see um, Noreen asking. Yeah, Noreen's wanting to know. It's not like a skinny leg, but it's, it's, it's slim cut in the sense that it's not a wide leg. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a little, it's, it's meant to be a little close. Um, kind of along the thigh area, but you can always, if you ever want to change the proportions of a pant, you could add to the, the outer seam. So, so not the inseam, you know, but the side seam here, you could add a little length there, a little width there, or you can um, cut the pant down, the pattern pieces down the middle and spread them out a little bit if you want, like an inch mm -hmm. or so um, after the hip area to give yourself a little more room if you want. Yeah, those are those are really good good tips because you really yes. could you could very easily taper that or make it wider. However, yeah, however or you, you could if definitely. you wanted to have more like a boot cut kind of thing, you can slash it below the knee and spread it as wide as, as wide as you want. Yeah, um, I see a question: Is it a comfort waistband? Yes, it's elastic in the back and then it's flat in the front. 
So um, you, if you do a, like a, a French tuck, you know, where you have your shirt tucked in in the front and you have it long in the back, then it looks, no one's the wiser that you uh -huh. have back there. Um, or, you know, however you want to wear it, you can yeah. wear it, but it is comfortable. It's easy to get on and it's so much easier to sew. I mean, I, I, I love the challenge of a good, a good fly with all those pattern pieces and the zipper and everything, but like, who's got, who's got that kind of time, <laughs> you know, not for yeah. every day. No, you're right. And, and it, you know, it just makes it easy to sew and, and easy to wear, which actually brings um, to a question. Um, Zena wants to know, okay, would you, how would you rate your patterns as far as um, sewing level? Right. They are, um, I would not say that they're for absolute beginners. I mean, I, people would, do need to have a little knowledge. The, um, the easiest pattern to, to make would be the, the two knit patterns because it doesn't require, you know, like the seam finishing and stuff like that. Um, and the, the gorgeous go day top, a, a, a woman just recently, a customer of mine bought that top and she made it. She never sewn a garment in her life. I mean, she's wow. a quilter. She knows how to sew. Okay. But, um, you know, she put it together and it looked phenomenal. She, she sent me like a little panicked email um, because she wasn't positive about one of the steps and I, I talked her through it and it was great. She did a great job. If you um, follow me on Instagram, which is at Style Falcon, you'll see her picture. Okay, um, that brings to a so question. A beginner, the skirt pattern, if you especially if you just do the side pockets, is also very suitable for beginners. You can you can put that together in either of those things together in an afternoon. Um, if you in, in probably in a couple hours if you are experienced. Okay. And Anne wants to know if you have a YouTube channel. I do. It's Style Falcon because it's everything is Style Falcon. Okay. Yes, it doesn't. I have a couple of videos there. I have one um, where I'm modeling one of the jackets that I made with, um, it's a colorless, I made a colorless version for myself. Um, and then there are a couple of, of tutorials, they're all five, five minutes or less, quick, quick tutorials about different things. So and it's then, probably, they'll, they'll find that if they go to your website, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Because we got that up, up on the, on the screen again. Um, I, my friend Carrie actually had a good um, tip. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but she uses PDF plotting mm -hmm. to print the patterns. Yeah. Um, good to know, PDF Gary. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Yeah. I was going to, we, we got onto another topic, but yeah. if you can, um, you know, you just email the patterns to them and they will print them for you. The shipping sometimes might get a little costly. So what I like to do is like, for example, there for my wholesalers, I'm printing paper patterns for my wholesalers um, and, and PDF plotting is doing my printing for me. Um, if you're okay. doing several patterns, it can be very cost effective that way because of the, the shipping. Because, um, yeah, yeah, not going to take up much more extra space. Good to know. Very mm -hmm. good. And then I don't know if we addressed um, Noreen's um, no button zippers or other closures. Just That's elastic. That's right. It's it just elastic. Matter. It's a pull on style, but yep. it doesn't look like a pull on style. Got so many great questions here tonight. Oh, Margaret, hang on. We're coming to that, Margaret. We're coming to that. <laughs> we didn't get there yet. So. Um, <laughs> And and <laughs> wants to do it, so, and I feel like we've put people on TED Talks for a while. I time. know we're teasing, but it, we're almost there. We're almost there. We just have a few more minutes to go. Um, Vicki wants to know if the pattern can be adapted for a stretch woven. Um, which, uh, are you talking that? about the, the, the jeans, Vicki? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Um, in fact, these jeans that I'm making are a stretch denim. Not like not super stretchy. I wouldn't do one that's like real elasticy, mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, it has like a little stretch, which is totally fun. And and can be, you know, forgiving for fit also, if you, you know, if you need that. Um, Becky says she loves those jeans. So let's see the jeans on a real person. I mean, you've got them on, but let me see. Mm -hmm. Do I have a, yeah. well, first of all, pictures of yeah, I've actually got um, the oh, line art cool. as well. Mm -hmm. So that shows you the shape and shows you the elastic. And it also... Um, this is a really good thing to pay attention to is the fact that your back rise comes up a little bit higher oh, yeah. and your front. And if you've ever bought jeans that were built like that, you like you, you wonder why you love them so much. That's why. Yeah. Because you don't need all that extra fabric when you sit down, mm -hmm. you No, know, and, and you, you need it when you in the back, you don't need it in the front. You need it in the back. That's what I meant yeah. to say. So. And yeah. these illustrations also the side view. I had the the graphic artist um, do the side view too, so you can see how there's a little bit of belly room there, um, because that's you know again the the body shape that I'm going for. You know, maybe you've you have a medical issue, you've had a few kids, like whatever your deal is, 
you might be happy to have a little extra room there. Yep. Just, I know I do. Just plain old ordinary gravity too. Right. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So let's see the next picture as we're winding yeah. down here. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a few um, stray questions that I want to make sure we, we um, cover, but um, Vicki's actually asking, are the genes wasted? I think she told us yes. So uh, you mean, do they have a waistband? Um, I think that's probably what you waste, if that's your question. And yeah, there is a, there is a waistband just like, you know, yep. like any waistband you ever had um, on there. It's, it's like a jeans style waistband. Front band is flat and the back band is elasticized, that's elastic, right? That's right. Uh -huh. okay. and, and also in the back, there's a seam in the back waistband. Um, so that, which is just another little detail that I like to do in, in my stuff is most, well, this, oh, the waistband isn't on these yet. Never mind. Um, but you can see maybe in the illustration there's, um, because if you ever need to change that elastic, if your elastic wears out or it gets stretched out or whatever, it's so much easier to change it to the center back than to try to mess around with the size. Oh, there. you got that right. But that was yep. just another little thoughtful thing that, you know. I just wanted to put out there that that really helps. Or if you find that this, you know, elastic gets stretched out or whatever, you can always, or, or maybe you need to replace the elastic. You need to, a little more elastic. If something changes, you know, your body changes, you know, that you can always do that. Well, Anne's going to try your jeans pattern. Oh, so nice. yes, we wish you the best. And Anne, try to, try to find some purple fabric. Um, Anne, Anne and I are both okay. purple people. So I'm sure we have some yeah. others out here, but, and Carol awesome. says, yes, you can do it, Anne. You can do it. Um, Anne wants to know what's the best elastic to use on the jeans pattern. Yeah, it's um, I, I like to use the, one of those like no no roll knit elastics. Um, it's an inch inch wide elastic. Um, there's and you know just the, you can get it anywhere. I mean, I I buy it by the roll from the Wawak catalog because that's you know where I live <laughs> at the moment. But you can get that that kind of thing anywhere. That kind of um, elastic. They also if you if you do find that it is um, uncomfortable for you to have something like a tight elastic back there, you could also use a lighter weight elastic and it would probably be fine. Okay. Um, too. Uh, I haven't, I haven't tried it with say like a pajama elastic or something, but I think, I think it would be okay. You could give it a try anyway, if, if you need that. Um, but usually that general, like no roll knitted elastic works great. Good. Great, great advice. So let's flip back to the picture we're showing the, mm -hmm. the real people and not only real people, but your testers are actually telling what they loved about mm -hmm. the pattern. So that is yeah. really, really good to hear. Really yeah. Hear. Um, the, the woman on the, on the right, um, you know, she's one of my testers and she did, I always like to get a picture of, of the garment with someone seated because, you know, we spent a lot of our lives sitting and you can sort of see how it, how it fits, you know, in the, in her nicely in the belly and in the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then of course my favorite model there on the left, uh, you know, she did it in this kind of really cool rust colored linen. Um, and it looks really super smart on her too. It's really sharp, and and again, it just shows the the variables in the in the size range, which is really really good. Well, have we kept them in suspense for for long <laughs> enough? Yeah. All right. Here's the sneak peek coming soon. <laughs> this is the Make a Point uh, dress or big top, uh, big shirt, and um, it has a couple of of this kind of my my um. Uh, my fanciest pattern. This is definitely not for beginners. Um, I think if you've if you if you have some experience, or if you're if you want to you know put in the time and you want to stretch yourself, this is the pattern for you. Um, this happens to be what I'm what I'm wearing. This is the the shirt version, and it's got. Um, I'm gonna bring you up bigger here. Yeah, if I can. That's the the fashion illustration is pretty. Yeah, good. let me bring you up here. There we go. Um, it you can either do a short sleeve like this or you can um do there's also a long sleeve version if you want to do the plackets and the cuff you know with the buttons and everything which is like you want you want to do something really special you can do that and that's what um I, I have done a version that the version um that she showed that joanne showed at the beginning uh, with me in the purple dress when i'm doing this in my collar that was the version that i'm wearing i was wearing um but it has Secret pockets. Ooh. Check them out. They're right there. You never know they were there. It doesn't in any way ruin your ruin your line. No, but not at all. Pockets. And it has what I what I call a modern princess seam. And I did this version in stripes so that you could really see the style lines. But you can see what it how it, what it does here. It's this interesting um, angled sort of princess seam, which in the first place is, is a good shape for 
for your bus, but also has it just gives it a it gives it a lot of movement. This is a, a garment that has a lot of movement to it, um, which I which I really enjoy. And then in the back, it has these sort of shoulder panels um, again that <clears throat> have a, an option for doing some color blocking or doing something kind of fun with it. And it has a, a traditional collar, you know, with a collar stand. Um, and so it's and it has a you know a fold over button pocket. Yeah. Is there a seam in the in the center back yoke? Carol wants to know. Yes, there is a seam in the center back yoke. I did the yoke on the bias just because I'm fancy like that. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. Like, yeah, if you just really want to like, you know, you really want to level up, you can do something like that, you know. Um, but I just, I like it. I like it because I like the how the stripe in the collar. And I mean, I, yeah. I'm bragging a little here, but I like how the stripe in the collar exactly continues the line on the. It adds so much interest for sure. And Anne says it would look cute with leggings. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's exactly what I what I how I like to wear them is is with like um you know like a skinny pants or um or some or something like that or or you can make a dress like the the illustration there has the has a dress uh, as a dress version which is just kids just above the knee and so it has a beautiful uh, it has like a lot of movement to it it's it's got a lot of drama and um I you know I'm I'm crazy about this one I'm I'm really yeah. happy with it and. I Go for testing right now and it'll be available for sale in October. Well, I'm testing it. I'm testing okay. it. I'm privileged to say, and I've got lots of ideas for adding um, machine embroidery to it. So I want to, I'm going to kind of um, uh, westernize mine just a little bit, give it a little bit of a, of a Western theme, but cool. Noreen, you're right. The inserts really help with interest and um, shaping. And uh, Carrie says is a top stitch throughout. Yeah, there's a fair amount of top stitching on it. Yes, <laughs> this this sort of modern princess seam, you need to top stitch that for it to be stable. And then, um, you know, there's top stitch like you always have in any kind of a shirt. There's there's edge stitching along the collar and the the pocket and, and things like that. Um, so yes, <laughs> he loves those hidden pockets for sure. Yeah, but you gotta good. you gotta love the pockets. You gotta have pockets, and of course, it's big enough for your phone. <laughs> and um. Uh, Christine says she'd love a maxi version. Well, that's easy to do, right? Just slice, spread, and yeah, it. yeah. If you wanted to lengthen it, and I have lengthened it, what you need to do because of the sweep of it um, is you need to use you kind of you know slash it across. Like if the if the, your green line is here, you slash you know horizontally, and then you can add maybe two inches, and then you and then you go down a couple inches, and you do, you may have to do it three or four times, and then true the side seams. So that other, if you just add it to the hem, you'll just end up with this like ginormous dress by the time you're done with it. Um, which you know, you do you if you like that kind of look, go for it. Um, yeah. But if you if you do the slash thing and then you just trip the side seams, you'll get you'll get a good fit and you'll you'll be sure that um, again this side panel with this this modern princess seam and of course the pocket, the hidden pocket, all lines up beautifully. And, um, and you'll see it when I, when I get it, when I get yeah. it, going, you'll see it. maybe you'll see it in pieces and parts before I even get to that, to that point. So, well, I think we've got to uh, wrap up with some of these, um, questions that I've been saving. So let me see, um, some that we might have missed. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I just say how awesome my husband is? He's watching on TV and he just brought me a glass of wine. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome husband. We appreciate our awesome husband. <laughs> Mine does a lot for me too. <laughs> so um, Riri, hopefully I'm saying that right, Riri. Um, uh, I have a lot of sewing machines, old and new. Do you prefer the old or the new? And what brand do you prefer? Right. Um, I I have to say that I do prefer the new ones. I like the computerized machines. Um, the, the old the old machines, they're all metal parts and they're just built like tanks and, and there's a lot to admire about them. Um, but I, I, I've i kind of been more of a, a new adopter of the, the computerized machines. And, um, yeah. but you can, you can sew, sew them on anything. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't need a fancy machine to, to make any of these garments. Definitely. Um, and we got a nice comment from uh, Joanne. She says, hi from Philadelphia. Always learn something new. We're glad glad to hear that, Joanne. And um, I think we covered this, but well, let's let's just um, make sure one more time. I, Kathleen asked, uh, 
how do you get the coupon code? Yeah. And then um, when Deborah you subscribe to the newsletter, you should get an email instantly that will have the coupon code in it. If you don't see it, like check your spam folder. <laughs> it might have ended up in the spam folder. Or I can just, you know, or I can also just, you know, if, if it doesn't work, I can just tell you, I can tell you what it is. It's just flock because you're joining the flock. Okay. The word flock in there too. It works that way too. Um, Very good. But, but what I, I ask people to sign up for the newsletter because I give my best deals to my customers in the newsletter. Um, you know, because uh, you're the people I like the most and, and I want to make you happy. And so you'll get exclusive everything when, when the pattern, when this pattern comes out, when any, any pattern comes out, you'll get a sneak peek at it and opportunity to buy it at a better discount than just anybody else. That's great. Plus then if you got a YouTube video with something, you yeah. know, then it, yeah. I, okay. I don't spam people. I send out a newsletter every other week. Like I don't, and I'm not going to, you're not going to get a thing in your email every day for me. I don't do that, but um, just yeah. enough to be interested. Exactly. Susan loves the pants pattern. And, um, Augustine, yes, that was a tease. Okay, so when we, <laughs> sorry, um, August. Yeah, when we showed that um, that right there, that is a sneak peek coming soon. Any um, estimate on that, uh, Diane? Yeah, it, it's supposed to come out in October. Um, you know, it is the pattern itself is has been thoroughly tested. It's really the instructions and the illustrations that are that the testers are doing, um, and and so and I have. Um, and, and they're 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 due back with their feedback in um, mid September, and then it usually takes me a couple of weeks to go over everything. Went and again, I, at, the, at that point, I also make the um, large print version of the instructions. So if you need that, or even okay. if you want it, it's there for you. All right, I got to get mine taped together and get get some fabric out and get stitching on this for sure. Right. I'm so excited <laughs> to see it, Joanna. I'm so excited. I'm really so excited. Thanks for letting me in on that. So sure. Well. I think we've I think we've covered everything and more tonight, but I just I can't thank you enough for um, being here with all of us. Everybody um, just, uh, you know, has enjoyed it so much. So say let's say goodbye to Diane for tonight, but let's um, make sure uh, we ask her to come back in the future. So watch watch for something. We've already um, had some talks on that. So. Definitely. Thanks, Joanne. It was really great to meet everybody. Joanne, you're the best. I'm really uh, so grateful for this opportunity and I really look forward to seeing what everybody makes. Well, thank you, Diane. It's been absolutely my pleasure and my joy to have you here tonight. So thank you. Good night. We'll see you again, again soon. All right, everyone. That is just, um, it's been a great show. Thank you all for being here again. Thank you for showing up live. Thank you for watching the replay. Um, this whole hour and a half was jam packed with uh, information and inspiration. And I just want to tell you that um, yeah, I hope that you've been as much inspired as I have. So until I see you again, I wish you all a world full of pretty stitches. Happy sewing. <laughs> bye bye. Night, everybody. Thanks for showing.